Hey everybody, thanks for coming out. My name is Nate Barbatini and I got a couple of minutes to talk to you all about ASP.NET Core 2.1 and specifically security, which should be a lot of fun. Last day of build, hopefully everybody has made it through, not too hungover, got some coffee. A little bit about myself as first, um, I, I don't work on the ASP.NET Core team or anything. I'm a Microsoft MVP and I've been using ASP.NET Core for a while since, uh, since the beta back when nothing worked and everything crashed. ASP.NET Core 2.0 has is, is gotten a lot better. It's really solid now. It's a really good way of building web applications and APIs. I've been have a couple of courses up on LinkedIn Learning about ASP.NET Core if you're interested in learning more about it. And I also wrote a book last year called The Little ASP.NET Core Book. It's a free ebook you can download if you, if you haven't had a chance to play with ASP.NET Core yet and you just want to kind of get up to speed in a really quick way. It's a free book. I'll put the link to, the, uh, to it at the end of the talk. I'm a, I work at Okta down in San Francisco as a product manager on some security software. Um, so I, I work in the security industry. I like talking about security and I like talking about ASP.NET Core as well. So in this 20 minutes or so, we get to talk about both of them at the same time. Um, so at a really high level, when you're building, when you're talking about building secure applications, that's a really broad topic that we could talk about for probably 20 hours, not 20 minutes. But there's three really big components to building secure software on the web. The first is what I would like to call framework level security, or essentially kind of what you get for free, what you get out of the box when you choose to build on top of something like .NET and ASP.NET. So in the .NET runtime, we have now almost decades really of Microsoft and the engineers at Microsoft building security into the core of the .NET runtime. So if you think about all the stuff that you'd have to worry about if you were, say, building a web server from scratch in like C++, which sounds like a really, really horrible thing to do, you would have to worry about stuff like buffer overflows and memory management and making sure that someone can't send some weird malformed request at you and, and blow up your server. That's, that's the type of stuff that if you're building on top of a runtime like .NET, you have to worry about a lot less, just because you get a lot of that security for free out of the box. They're doing me memory management for you. They're, they're doing a lot of that under the hood stuff for you. And likewise, when we go up a layer to ASP.NET, to the framework level, there's a lot of security built into ASP.NET Core as well. So things like you know, making sure that when you, when you bind data from the request into a model, or when you're printing, you're writing data out to the screen with a razor file, you're not printing script tags and stuff and opening up some injection attacks. That's all built into ASP.NET Core as well. So all that to say, you get a lot of stuff for free just by building on top of this secure framework. I would, I would describe ASP.NET Core as secure by default, which is awesome. I think the team has done a great job in doing that. Now, you can have all the, all the secure by default that you want. You can have all the protection from the runtime that, that they give you, but it doesn't prevent you from doing something dumb. So if you, you know, forget to check whether someone's authenticated before you let them delete something, or you, you know, grab some data from the request and directly put it into a SQL query without, without parameterizing it or sanitizing it, the framework's not going to stop you from doing that. You could do something dumb. Um, and it's important to build your software in a way that you're using good coding practices, secure coding practices. We don't have enough time to go into that here today, but I'll give you some links at the end of the talk to kind of help you understand how to learn better coding practices, how to, how to avoid the common pitfalls of writing insecure software. Now, the third thing, and the thing that we will have a little bit of time to talk about here, is something that I like to call hardening. So taking the, the framework that's already pretty secure, pretty secure by default out of the box, and just locking it down even further to make sure that your applications are as secure as possible before you even start writing a lot of code. When it comes to hardening a framework like ASP.NET Core, there's three big things you want to think about. The first is you want to think about HTTPS. So turning on uh, connection level encryption for your entire application. It used to be, back in the day, this used to be really expensive and it used to be really hard. Um, but with stuff like Let's Encrypt, you can get certificates for free now. It's really easy to hook this up in IAS or on, uh, on Nginx or your load balancer to add a certificate to turn on HTTPS. So it used to be really hard and expensive, now it's super easy. And it's really easy in ASP.NET Core as well. In fact, as I'll show you, in the new version 2.1, which is in preview right now, you get HTTPS turned on by default everywhere, including in development. So you don't have to worry about switching from development into prod and, and a bunch of stuff breaking. So HTTPS is really important, but it's also really easy, which is awesome. 
Anti-forgery or CSRF prevention is another really important thing to have to think about and to turn on. ASP.NET Core already includes stuff that, that makes this pretty easy to prevent against. The idea here, if you're not familiar with it, is if you have an application that is accepting post requests, in other words, somebody's submitting a form in your application, and that turns into a post request that one of your controllers handles, you want to make sure to check that the, the, person, the, the, the person who submitted that post request actually was on your application. And it wasn't some malicious site tricking your user into submitting a form in some other way. Now, ASP.NET Core includes a way to check for this. If you have a form in one of your Razor files, in one of your views, you can actually, without even having to do anything, you get a token, a hidden token baked into that form that you can then verify on the other end to make sure that that request originated with your application. Now, the thing, you get that for free, but you have to check it. You have to opt into the verification on the other end. So I'll show you how to do that. It's really easy to turn on. The third thing that you can think about is security headers. Is anybody here familiar with HTTP security headers like HSTS or CSP? Got a couple of hands. So this is one of my favorite things to talk about because it's something that a lot of people don't know about. In modern browsers like Edge and Chrome and Firefox, there's all these extra security features that are built into the browsers. They're right there. But they're not on by default. You have to opt into them. You have to turn them on. And the way that you turn them on is by having your server return extra HTTP headers back with all your responses. If you do that, then all these features magically get turned on, and you get a more secure application, which is really cool. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to jump into some code real quick. Anybody here ever built anything with ASP.NET Core, any version in the past? Awesome. I'm talking to the right folks. What about ASP.NET Core 2.0? Anybody were using the new framework? OK, cool. So I'm on 2.1 preview. Um, this is just the preview bits you can get if you download it from GitHub or from Microsoft. Um, the, the full version, the full release of 2.1 is happening next month, I think. I didn't see that keynote, so hopefully I'm giving the right info. What I'm going to do is switch over to my development machine. Like I said, I have 2.1 preview installed. Let's see if we can make this text big. Everybody can see that OK? Let me know if it needs to be bigger. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a, uh, a directory for my project. I'll say ASP.NET Core 2.1 security demo. And then I'm just going to do .NET new MVC. This creates a new MVC application, same exact thing you get if you're in Visual Studio and you do file new ASP.NET Core MVC. So I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio Code. And see if I can make this bigger as well. So like I said, the three things we're going to look at, HTTPS, anti-forgery, security headers. HTTPS in 2.1, as I mentioned, is turned on out of the box. So I actually don't have to do anything here for this to be served over HTTPS. If I go to my console and I do .NET run to start up the application, it's going to spin up on port 5000, which is the default ASP.NET Core port. But it's also going to spin up on port 5001 as an HTTPS server. So if I open up a uh, browser here and do localhost 5001, you can see that that is served over HTTPS. That has the secure lock icon. And this is in development, HTTPS. What they've done is when you install this, uh, these tools, they generate a local self-signed certificate for your machine, no matter what platform you're on. And that lets you do HTTPS locally. Then when you go to production, you would install your own certificate that you got from Let's Encrypt or somebody else. Um, but this reduces one of, the, one of the extra frictions that happen sometimes when you go from development into production. You're, you know, if you're developing on HTTP and then you try to go into production with HTTPS, sometimes like all your scripts and images break because they're not expecting to be loaded over HTTPS. So that's just one more thing that helps the transition to HTTPS be even easier. So didn't really have to do anything. HTTPS is already working. Let's take a look at anti-forgery. I mentioned that if you have an action that accepts a post request, you're going to want to turn on this extra check that looks for the, the, the hidden token that ASP.NET Core already puts into that form. The way that you do that on, a, on an action, like a per action basis, is by doing this validate anti-forgery token attribute right here. But you have to remember to put that on every single post request or post action. So a better practice is actually to do it one time for your whole application. And you can do that in the startup class, where in the configure services method here, where you actually um, configure MVC, if I do options and add some options here, I can do 
options.filters.add and add that attribute as a global filter for my whole application. What that means is it'll apply to all of my controllers all at once without me having to remember to put them all on each one. So if I add a new form, add a new post action, I don't have to remember to put that attribute on there. Now, you might, if you're looking closely, you might notice that this is not called validate anti-forgery token attribute. It's called auto validate anti-forgery token attribute. The reason that's important is because if I didn't have that, if I just added the same attribute that I add with the, uh, on, on the route, if I did this, then the entire application would break because it would be looking for that token and doing, trying to do that validation on all requests, even like get requests and options requests and things like that. Now, I don't want that to happen because that token won't be available. It doesn't really apply to things like get requests. By using this auto-validate anti-forgery token attribute, it's quite a mouthful, that is smart enough to ignore stuff like get and options and trace and only apply to put and post and the things that you really want to validate this on. So with that one line of code, I've now protected against CSRF attacks, cross-domain form submissions. And then we can look at security headers. So a couple of folks said they were familiar with this. If you're trying to get into figuring out how these security headers work for the first time, I strongly recommend this tool called securityheaders.io. It's made by a guy named Scott Helm. Really cool dude. He's a, a Microsoft guy or a .NET guy as well. Basically, this tool will scan your site tell you if you're using any of these security headers already. And if not, it'll suggest the ones that you should add to your site to make it more secure. There's another tool very similar called Observatory by Mozilla. And it basically does the same thing if it loads. It'll scan your site, let you know what you should add, and give you some recommendations. So um, the way that you have to use this, though, is you have to have a public address for your website in order to scan it. Because I can't, I can't just put like localhost 5,000 in here, it won't be able to scan me. So what I can do is I could deploy my application to production, but I'm not really ready to do that yet. What I can do is I can use a tool like ngrok to create a tunnel from my local machine out to the internet. I can do like ngrok HTTP 5,000. That creates this tunnel where now I have this like random address .ngrok.io, and I can open this up, and it'll tunnel into my local machine. Now. It gets kind of in the weeds, but the way that this works with HTTPS is that it, ha it supports HTTPS all the way up to the load balancer level, to the gateway. And then ngrok is actually terminating those HTTPS requests and sending me a, a request over HTTP, which is a really common pattern if, you're, if you've used a load balancer or an application gateway. That's a really common pattern that's done. That's fine, and ASP.NET Core can handle that fine, but I need to add some middleware to my pipeline to let ASP.NET Core know that that's what's happening. So if I go down here into my middleware and I add at the very top of the configure method, I need to add something like um, something like this. I have a snippet so you don't have to watch me struggle through typing it. Um, this use forwarded headers middleware will tell ASP.NET Core to look for this extra header that the gateway will add called x forwarded for, which basically lets gives ASP.NET Core a hint that says, hey, this request might look like it's coming in over HTTP, but you should actually treat it like it's HTTPS because that HTTPS is being handled by the gateway instead of by your application. Kind of in the weeds, like I said. But what this means is I can then um, restart here, restart my application. It'll come up on port 5000 like it did before. I can still access it just like I did before, you know, localhost colon 5001. That still works. But now I can also copy this tunnel address, something something.ngrok.io, and despite the slow Wi-Fi, it will load eventually. Um, that is also connecting right to my local machine. Everybody's trying to load Facebook right now all at once. So what this means is I can copy this address. I can throw it into the security headers scanning tool and hit scan. Hopefully, the Wi-Fi will hold up. And I get a result, not a great one yet. I get a big red F. Um, that's not to say that ASP.NET Core is super insecure. It just means that we're not returning any of these extra security headers yet. So this gives me a really good like manual integration test, if you will. I can kind of iterate on this and figure out if we can improve this score. And it turns out it's pretty easy to improve on this score. The first recommendation in the long list of recommendations that this tool gives us is something called HTTP Strict Transport Security. This is sometimes called HSTS 
for strict transport security. That's a header that you can return from your application that basically tells the browser, hey, this website is intended to be loaded over HTTPS. Don't ever load it over HTTP. Like even if the user goes to the address bar and like deletes the S and tries to force it to go over HTTP, I don't want that to happen. Just before the request even hits the network, the browser will redirect it, rewrite it to HTTPS. And that is better than having your application redirect to, from HTTP to HTTPS. Because if you're doing application level redirection, that means at least one request went over the network on HTTP before it got redirected. But if you have this header coming back from your application, then that, that can't even happen, which is awesome. So it turns out that ASP.NET Core 2.1 has this header, has support for this header built in. You can see it right here, app.useHSTS. That'll, that'll tell your application to return that strict transport security header. And if you pay really close attention here, that it's only applying when we're not in development mode. In other words, when we're in production mode. The reason for that is because you don't really want this header to come back on localhost. It can kind of mess up your localhost testing. But in, in production, you definitely want this header. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to switch us into production mode so you can kind of see, see the header coming back. Now I need to restart my application one more time. And then you can see on, let me open up my network panel here. If I refresh this page, if I look at the very first request that loaded this page, I know it's kind of small here, but there's a new header that was returned from the server called strict transport security, has some information about how long the browser should, should enforce this. Right now, I think it's like two weeks, but the typical thing once you have it working is to set it to like a year. Um, and since we've added this header, or if we rescan here, we should have a much better result, slightly better result, D. There's a couple other headers that it recommends us to add. Um, most of these are super easy to add. I'll show you how to do that. In the case of those other security headers, um, there's no built-in middleware to do it, but you can add one really easily with NuGet. So I can do .NET add package. Um, there's a package called nwebsec.aspnetcore.middleware. If I add that package, then I just have to add a couple of lines of code to my startup.cs file. Oops, not that. All right. Right here in my application pipeline, if I do um, add some about four lines of code, each one of these adds another one of these security headers. If you want to know how each one of them works, you can read on the securityheaders.io website. There's like a blog post that explains each one of them, goes into a ton of detail, which is super helpful. With that done, I can do .NET run one more time. And rescan with the tool. I should get a little bit better result now. Now we got an A, so that's a lot better. The only one that we haven't done yet is something called content security policy, which is arguably one of the best security headers to use, actually. It lets you lock down and whitelist what external content is allowed to be loaded from your site, so like scripts and images and style sheets and stuff, which is really awesome to prevent cross-site scripting attacks. Um, it's a little bit more complicated to configure the first time. Generally, when you turn it on, everything breaks because all your external scripts start, stop working until you start whitelisting them uh, one by one. You know what I'm talking about. Anybody who's configured it before <laughs> is nodding. Um, so that's also easy to add, but take some time to configure it. Let me switch back to my slides here. So obviously, we don't have a ton of time in the 20 minutes to talk about everything that goes into security, but I can give you some ways to learn more. So I mentioned that good coding practices is something that you just can't like have an automated test for. You have to really understand how to build secure applications. The OWASP project website is a fantastic place to start. So OWASP is the open, open source web application security project. They've basically compiled a list of all the, all the bad stuff that can happen to applications, all the attacks, all the common threats. And also, they tell you how to mitigate them. So here's how to prevent SQL injection. Here's how to prevent cross-site scripting, all that good stuff. They have a ton of really good info there. Um, if you just want to learn about ASP.NET Core, then I super recommend the, the course library on LinkedIn Learning. They have a lot of good courses there, including some by myself, shameless plug. Um, you can also download my book at littleasp.net slash book. It's a free ebook for learning the ASP.NET Core framework if you haven't had a chance to play with it yet. 
And if you have any other questions, we don't have time for Q&A here, but come find me over there in the LinkedIn Learning uh, little totem, or you can hit me up on Twitter at nbarbatini. Ask me any questions you have about security or ASP.NET Core. Thanks so much for your time. Have a good time.